Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 1231. Notebook 4 of the Diary of St. Faustina Notebook 4 Jesus, Mary, and Joseph Today, Jesus came to live in my heart. He descended from his throne on high, the great Lord, the creator of all things, and he came to me in the form of bread. O eternal God, in my bosom enclosed, possessing you, I possess all heaven. And with the angels I sing to you, Holy, I live for your glory alone. Not with a seraph do you unite yourself, O God, but with a wretched man, who can do nothing without you. But to him you are ever merciful. My heart is your abode, O King of eternal glory. Rule in my heart and be Lord, as in a palace of splendor untold. O great, incomprehensible God, who have deigned to abase yourself so, humbly I adore you, and beg you in your goodness to save me. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. O sweet Mother of God, I model my life on you. You are for me the bright dawn. In you I lose myself, enraptured. O Mother, Immaculate Virgin, in you the divine ray is reflected. Midst storms, tis you who teach me to love the Lord. O my shield and defense from the foe. Krakow, August 10th, 1937. St. Mary Faustina of the Blessed Sacrament. O sacred host, fountain of divine sweetness, You give strength to my soul. O you are the omnipotent one who took flesh of the Virgin. You come to my heart in secret, beyond reach of the groping senses. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Krakow, August 10th, 1937, Notebook 4. All for you, Jesus, I desire to Adore your mercy with every beat of my heart, and to the extent that I am able to encourage souls to trust in that mercy as you yourself have commanded me, O Lord. In my heart, in my soul, there is a dark night. My spirit has come up against an impenetrable wall that hides God from me. But this darkness is not of my doing. Strange indeed is this torture of which I fear to write in full. But even in this state, I am trying to be faithful to you. O my Jesus, always and in all things, my heart beats for you alone. August 10th, 1937. I came back today from Rabka to Krakow. I feel very ill. Only Jesus knows how much I am suffering. During these days, I have very much resembled Jesus crucified. I have armed myself with patience in order to explain to each sister why I was not able to stay there. That is, because my health had become worse, even though I knew very well that certain sisters would inquire, not out of sympathy for my sufferings, but in order to add to them. O Jesus, What darkness is enveloping me, and what nothingness is penetrating me. But, my Jesus, do not leave me alone. Grant me the grace of faithfulness. Although I cannot penetrate the mystery of God's visitation, it is in my power to say, Your will be done. St. Faustina, as is her custom, begins her fourth notebook with some poetry. First, she writes an ode of love to Jesus in the Eucharist. She is amazed that God wants to dwell in her heart. She opens her heart to him. Then she writes an ode to Mary, the model of her life. The ray of mercy is reflected in Mary's life. She 
protects St. Faustina in the midst of the storms of her life. And finally, she writes an ode to the Sacred Host. Jesus is her strength, the Incarnate One, who comes to Faustina's heart in secret beyond the knowledge of the senses. And Faustina pledges her love and fidelity to Jesus at the beginning of her notebook. She promises to spread knowledge of his mercy to souls and to call on them to trust in him. She acknowledges that she is enduring a dark night in which she can't perceive the presence of God in her soul. She doesn't want this, but it is God's will at that moment. She strives to remain faithful in the midst of the spiritual darkness. Her heart beats for Jesus alone. She repeats what she had written in the last notebook about returning to Krakow from Rabka. She had to return because of her health, which was so poor, and the mountain climate only made things worse. She knew that some of the sisters would gossip about her quick return and even try to make her feel ashamed. She prays to remain faithful in the midst of the darkness of her suffering.